How we doing? How's it going, man? Good. What's your name? Caleb? My name's Caleb, yeah. Oh, cool. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Are you a, a newer agent or? Yeah, I, I just got my license last week, so. Oh, nice. Congrats. Thanks. Yeah. So did you do like Hondros or? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So where, where do you uh, live and all that? I live um, kind of in Columbus and then, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Well, How welcome. What's that? How about you? Where do you live? Uh, I'm out like past, I'm past like Newark out east. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but I'm around the Columbus area too. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, this is, I think. All right. I want to teach everyone how to list a home, how to market the home and how to get it into contract. So we are recording this. It will be available on the trailblazing real estate YouTube page. Um, hopefully as soon as tomorrow. Uh, we are going to go start to finish soup to nuts as in-depth as possible on literally the, the steps that you need to take to list a home. The majority of you first year realtors will mainly be working with buyers. It's just the nature of how real estate works. The further into the game you get, the more frequently you get into relationships where people need to sell their house. When that time comes, I want you to be prepared. So don't rely on me recording this and putting it on the YouTube channel. I want you to be taking notes. Build out your own checklist so that you can use it in whatever way works best for you. I, wanna, I want you to peer behind the curtain and see exactly how I do it and how I expect my team to do things. The way that we've got it working right now is honestly, all of our homes get into contract within two or three days. And... Uh, every single one that I've listed in the last probably five to 10 listings, they all go for over list price. The reason we do that is because we market the snot out of it and we communicate really, really well. So let's back up. And a lot of you guys are going to know this because we've covered this before. But the very first step when taking a listing is to meet with who you're going to be listing their house. We, you want to meet at the person's house. So maybe somebody in your world raises their hand and says, I want to sell my home. Great. When, am, when are you cool for me to come over and walk through the house? It's probably going to take 30 minutes at most. Now, I'll preface that by saying if you're chatty Kathy or if your client is chatty Kathy, it's not going to take 30 minutes. It's going to take a lot longer than that, but it's okay. Your goal is to get in the door. A lot of us are concerned that we might be competing for a listing. I'll be honest, guys, I think I've competed in my entire five-year career for like a handful of listings and you are unique and people will wanna work with you once you get in front of them. So just remember that going confidently, knowing that this is yours, okay? So the first step is to tour the home. Let's have some uh, participant involvement. What are some things we should be doing when we're touring the home? Everyone write these things down as people pop up with a good conversation here. Look for any like quick fixes, like chipping paint, um, light fixtures that could be touched up, just quick stuff like that that can um, make the home appeal more to, to buyers coming through. Yes. And I'm going to piggyback off that. So what we're, what Sam's referring to is return on investment items, ROI. If you guys are ever in business or heard that term, return on investment simply means if I work on this thing, I should see a return financially on that investment. Some things that you'll never see a return on investment on, um, you know, uh, like investing in replacing a whole bathroom right before you list, that's going to be tough because you're gonna spend a lot of time and a lot of money and you could probably make what you have work already. So we're looking for little things, things like touch up paint, magic erasing uh, marks on walls, landscaping, mulch, flowers right now would go a long way. Um, 
um, air, air fresheners, air fresheners in homes that have dogs or cats and that have that pungent smell, or maybe you got a smoker inside, you need to make sure that the air is fresh. So what Sam's referencing is things that are easy, low hanging fruit that shouldn't take an, a, a whole day to, to remedy that will turn into improving the appeal. Great call out, Sam. What else should we be looking for when we're touring homes? Yeah, I had actually yesterday, Josh, a, a listing appointment and it's uh, out in rural, you know, out where I'm at and um, basically, you know, curb appeal, I think is key. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a day next week and go out and just, you know, put a couple bags of mulch down, flowers, um, pull weeds. Um, they have a large garage that I'm going to help, you know, get rid of some wood and just junk that's just sitting around. So just clutter, I think is, is key too. Yep. You only get one chance to make a first impression. I want you guys to literally tell people this during your listing appointment. You only get one chance to make a first impression. What does that mean? Well, when the person pulls up to the house, is it a good impression or does this house look like a, a train wreck? Great call out. And I love what you said, Michael. Don't be afraid to jump in and pitch in. That's how you create raving fans. Five-star reviews is what we're after. Don't be afraid. If it's light work, now don't go over there and spend three days getting it ready. That's craziness. You're not going to reap the benefit of that. They have to do some work. Go above and beyond. Okay, what else should we be looking for? Any opportunity to declutter the house? Less is more. You want the space to look as large as possible. When I say declutter and when Brad says declutter, that also means personal effects. We don't want the home to be just oozing personal photos and personal artwork and the last name of the person who's living there all over the place, right? So we want to minimize that. It's not, it's not too bad to have a few things, but if you've got a shrine to this family, that's going to make it tough for any potential buyer to walk in and envision themselves there. So thin to win is a term in golf. It's also a term in real estate. You want to be thin in each room, not overly furnitured. That's not a word, but I just made it up. And, uh, you know, artwork that uh, doesn't scream family. Now, as you're touring the home, you can do this in one of two ways, in my opinion. Number one, you can take a notepad and paper and literally write out these notes, or you can do the really smart thing, which is what I've gotten hip to because I'm young and hip, is taking notes on a phone app. So I've got literally, I just pull up, the, pull open the notes app on my phone and I name it, whatever the address is of the home. And then I start to, right when I pull up, I start to list out things that could be improved. So to Michael's point, I start with curb appeal. Does the home need weeded? Do shrubs need trimmed? Does the house need power washed? That's not as expensive as you might think. And then once we get in the house, then we start to notate things like decluttering. But we're, what, what we're doing there is building a list of things that need to be, um, things that need to be done in order to improve the house and basically get it listing ready, number one, and fetch as large a purchase price as possible. So through creating this living document, digital document, I can share it easily with the, the client afterwards. And I have it all by memory. Other things that I like to ask for when I'm touring the home, normally when I walk in, I talk about the process. And so I say, hey, here's my goal today. My goal is to walk the home through the lens of a buyer so that we can derive a plan of action to get the home listing ready and to make you the most money possible. I'm not going to ask you to tear down walls, to replace a whole kitchen. What I'm looking for are small, manageable things that we can do to get you listing ready. What I'm 
I'm also looking to do today is get uh, an idea of updates and upgrades throughout the house. So that then when I go home later, I can compare apples to apples sales comparisons and derive a price at which I think we could sell this property. Lastly, what I'll do after I have that information is I will create a net to seller sheet for you that will delineate what you are going to make bottom line, hypothetically, if we sold at one of three different price points. We'll create a checklist. I will share it with you along with the net to seller and we will have some go do's. We will have an idea of time frame that we can get these things done by so that we can hit the market rolling and, and get you in contract as quick as possible. Now, this pricing strategy conversation also happens during this tour. My pricing strategy script goes like this. Because number one, let's, let's be honest, guys. The sellers only really care about one thing. How much money can I make off this home? So if I plant the seed correctly, I'm going to minimize their, um, the idea of how much they can make, which is going to be beneficial. Let me, let me go into my script. My script is this. I like to under-promise and over-deliver. What that means is I like to, I'd love to say I can get you $50,000 more than it'll appraise for, but I'm not going to promise that. Instead, what I like to do is give you three different pricing options. Number one is the, uh, the greedy option and, and the one that I try to steer away from the most, and that is to price your home high, higher than even I think it'll appraise for, and just pray that one person will walk through that's willing to pay that much. This strategy is not my favorite because it limits traffic and it relies on a lot of luck. So that's option one. Option two is to price it right where I think it'll appraise at. I don't mind this strategy, um, but I prefer option number three the most. And if I can convince you, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller, then this is the one that historically for me has worked the best and will work the best for you. So option number three is we take what I think the home will appraise for and we just back, back, back down a little bit. So if I think it'll appraise for 300,000, maybe price it at 295. Now, the reason that we do that is because number one, people are smart. People know when they think that there's a value in a home. So what does that do? It creates an excess number of people that want to see the home. When we create a lot of traffic, that gives us more of an opportunity to get multiple offers. And at that point, when we receive multiple offers, all I need is two. That's when I really flourish and we can get you better pricing and better terms. So with that in mind, when I perform this net to seller sheet for you, I'm gonna give you the price that I think we should list at. And then I'm gonna give you two other prices that in best case scenario, we'll achieve should we get the house ready and we get enough traffic. That's the spiel. So three options, people love options. And when you explain it this way, when I explain that to you, don't you think everyone's gonna be like, well, yeah, let's price it just a hair lower and end up higher than I thought initially. Everyone's gonna go that route, as long as they're smart. There are some butt heads out there that'll say, no, I wanna price it as high as I possibly can. And if that's the case, you need to do some legwork ahead of time. And that's, that looks like this. Okay, you want to price it as high as you possibly want. Well, in order for us to work together, I need a promise from you. If in the first week we're not getting enough showings and we have zero offers, that tells us one thing. The home is not priced correctly. I want you to agree to reduce the price once we have that occur. And if they're going to be unwilling to do that, then guys, I hate to say it, but you've got a client you probably don't want to work with. It's better to know that on the front side than to waste a lot of time, energy, and money on the back side. All right. When I'm also there, I like to ask them, number one, how much they owe. And I put that in my notes so that I can create their net to seller sheet. If you don't, if you don't know what a net to seller sheet is, then hang on and you, you will. I'll tell you. 
I also like to ask them, typically when I first get in, tell me about any defects that, that you have with the home that I wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye. Things like roof leaks, basement leaks, uh, any past history of mold or rodents. The reason you're asking these things is, and you tell them this, you say, is because I'm, we have to create a residential property disclosure, which discloses any, if, any, anything the naked eye can't see. So if I was a buyer, you would want me to know that in the past there was a, a, a electrical fire in the bathroom, but it was fixed and no issue since. And you write all this down in your notes. The reason you write all this down in the notes is because if you were to, let's say you had a time frame of a month until you listed, when you go back to list this thing in the MLS in a month, you're not going to remember everything that you talked about. So you need a living document and that can be digital or again, it can be on paper. I don't care how you do it, but do it digital. All right. Um, any questions on the home tour? No, but I, I do have a question about, so if, when you're talking about the three different uh, price points that you want to list at, and they choose the, the, the least one to try to drive in more traffic, and they end up still getting the, you know, the lowest one, how do you have that conversation if they could have just, you know, listed at like the medium price? I know it really happens, but. No, it does. It happens a lot, actually. So I, I think I shared last week, I had two UA buyer uh, sellers. And they're, they're sticklers, and they really wanted to price it kind of more at the middle to higher end. And I just used data. I said, hey, guys, let's, let's, I'm going to send you three comps that have sold in the last year. Take a look at their days on market and what they listed it for and what they sold it for. And in most instances, you're going to be able to prove to them that if you price it low, it ends up selling high. And it happens in three or four days. So I just provide data and that that has worked unequivocally almost every single time. There are some people that are just going to be hard headed. You're not going to be able to convince. And at the end of the day, you have to kind of do what they ask you to do as long as within reason. If you just don't agree, then just don't work with them. Or plant the seed and say, hey, I, I don't think this is the best strategy. So will you at least permit me this? If a week goes by and we don't get anything, then we backtrack on our price. And I want to remind you, sir or ma'am, that we only get one chance to make a first impression. So if we last a whole week with nothing, people are going to think there's something wrong with your house. You're almost, I hate to say this, you're not, you're using the sales tactic of a little bit of fear in there because I want people to understand I'm, I'm under promising and I almost guarantee in this market that I will over deliver for you, but you have to let me use the strategy that works. And if you guys have questions about this in the future or people that push back, use my stats. You're part of our brokerage. You can use our stats and say, well, our team at our brokerage do things X way and it seems to work the majority of the time. Good question. Any other questions in regard to the home tour? All right, after we've done the home tour, I go home and I typically that day create a net to seller sheet. Now, how I do with that, and I'm not gonna go into how to pull comps because we've done that class a million times. I pull comps, I derive a price point that I believe it will sell for, or that I, I feel comfortable listing it. And then I create my net to seller sheet. I will try, I will pull up a net to seller sheet, even though I've pulled this up a million times in case you all don't know. If you go to ohiosuperiortitle.co, that is Ohio's, I, I should be screen sharing for y'all. Ohiosuperiortitle.co, that is the title company I'm a, uh, investor in and I believe in and they do an awesome job for me. You go to services, net sheet, click on it, scroll down, launch the app, 
sign in. If you are new to it, you'll have to create a sign in. And then you play with this. I'm not going to go through this whole process, but basically you say, okay, closing date. Well, if we list it in two weeks, we're probably going to be 30 days out from two weeks. So let's say we list it on the 29th, then that would be July, let's say 28th is the closing because you don't close on the weekends. Let's say, I think it would sell, I think we should list for $299 or let's go with Sam's $349.9. And then let's say when I asked them how much they owed, they owed two fifty. Is the seller paying titles insurance? Yes, the seller in Central Ohio pays title insurance. Let's just say they've owned the house for more than ten years. Just say no. Select the county. Let's just who cares. And then on the auditor site, pull up their previous year tax amount. Put that there. Let's say five thousand dollar or. $5,000. Enter your commission. Hopefully you're maybe getting a full 6%. And then from there, you don't need to enter all this other stuff in. It's just, it's just junk. Okay. So from there, we calculate. And according to this, if the sales price was about 350 and we owe 250 after all taxes and fees, they're going to make almost 72K. Now, what I really like to do though, is I like to go back in and edit it and say multi-offer. And I like to say, okay, well, if we listed at 349, what if we got 360 for it? And then even better, what if we got 370 for it. And then I calculate, and now I have three different uh, price points. And again, I kind of have this conversation via email once I send this over to my sellers. I say, hey, my strategy would be to list it at 349.9, hopefully get a lot of traffic, which means hopefully get a lot of offers, which means hopefully we're closer to 360 or 370. In those scenarios, this is what you could be walking away with either 72, 82, or $92,000. Uh, title insurance. So Otesh is asking if I could explain title insurance. In Central Ohio, the seller pays for title insurance. What title insurance simply means is it's typically like $1,000 to $1,500, depending on the price point of the home. Title insurance guarantees that the buyer receives the title free and clear of any liens. So if they close and later on uh, somebody came against them with a lien on the home, then the title company would pay for that because they bought you bought title insurance. In different parts of the state, title insurance is not required. Uh, but in Central Ohio, I've only ever used title insurance on every every policy that, or every home sale that we have. All right. So I've got the net to seller. I've sent it to the, the owner. They now know, and I normally do this with an email. I say, my strategy would be to price it at 349. Hope that we get more than that. And here's what you got. All right, we got kicked off the other line. I am going to uh, record this. And where I got cut off was on title insurance. In Central Ohio, the seller pays title insurance. It guarantees that the buyer receives uh, the title free and clear of any liens. So if in the future anybody does come and try to say you owe me money uh, to the new buyer, they're guaranteed to be covered. The title company would then have to deal with that. Um, okay, so we've sent the net to seller. We've derived a price. Next piece is to set a time frame that we want to hit the market. So um, we just verbally say, okay, your, your list of things that are required to be done might take you three days. Would next week at this time be okay for us to schedule photos and then list the property coming soon and then list the following Friday, go active. Those three things must happen in, in my estimation. That's how I've seen success. So what we typically do is 
confirm with the seller when they can have the work done, schedule photographs for the next day. Once you have photos scheduled, I use WOW Video Tours. Uh, they do a good job and they're very timely. Once we have photographs, they will be received the following day. I'll get my photos the following day. And at that point, I can I can put the listing together and put it on uh, put it on the MLS as a coming soon. The reason I like to use coming soon is because I like to have some lead time to um, market the property. Marketing the property is so critical, guys. So few of us agents out there actually take the time to go the extra mile and market the property. But that's what we are trying to do. And that's what we get paid so well for. And think about it. We're going to get paid more if we get a higher purchase price, right? 3% of more is more. So if I market it really well, odds are I'll get a better purchase price, more offers, and I'll have a happier seller. That's a perfect scenario. Uh, so we set the timeline. We go coming soon. You can go coming soon up to 30 days if you want. I don't like to do that much. I like to typically do coming soon on a Monday and then go active on Friday. Reminder, when you're in coming soon status, you are not allowed, the seller is not allowed to show the property. They must not show the property. We show the property starting on the list date, the active list date. So the reason I like Friday is because typically people are excited for the weekend. You've given it now four and a half, five days maybe of marketing. And you've basically created a funnel effect. That funnel effect is so key because you want as many people to be there as possible at the same time. The reason being human nature. We want competitive spirits to be risen. And we do that through having overlapping showings. Uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. After we've agreed to a price and we've agreed to the timing strategy, we are then going to go to dot loop and fill out all of our important documents. Our important documents include, and I've done this many, many times. If you're questioning what documents need to be performed or signed, go to my how to get paid uh, video. Real quickly, the things that we share are exclusive right to sell contract. That allows me permission to sell a property. Anti-fraud, consumer guide, electronic signature, appointment of agent. Those things I, I share all at once to get their signatures because they don't edit those things. If the home was built before 1978, I need a lead-based paint disclosure. And then regardless of when the home was built, I need a residential property disclosure. Remember, you cannot fill out the property disclosure. You must have them do it. So either print it out and take it to them for, for ink uh, writing or allow them to edit when you're sending. One other thing that I like to do on my team is have a pre-listing fact sheet. That fact sheet looks like this. It tells the any potential buyer what the property address is, what is included with the sale of the home. So if, if they've got uh, bathroom mirrors that they wanted to take with them, they would say, no, it's excluded. Are there any lease items, maybe a propane tank or a security system? What are the approximate utilities information? When were the last thing these major heavy hitting items that I always get questions on were serviced or replaced? And then other common questions like what are the schools? Are fences allowed, pools allowed? And most importantly, when is preferred closing date and preferred possession? What I'm doing here is eliminating future questions from people. I'm putting all the cards on the table for any potential buyer's agent to make this easy. What I'm really trying to do, guys, is eliminate people calling me. I don't like to talk on the phone and tell people the same answer over and over again. If you get a hot listing, you could get 30 offers. Do you want 30 people calling you? I know I don't. So this fact sheet is really cool. And you can make it your own if you want to or steal mine. I don't care. Um, so. I just talked about 
documents and dot loops. So you need to get all those done before you list. And I always get it before we photograph too. I don't want to spend my own money. I spend my own money on photo photographs, 150 bucks typically. And even more if I go with aerial photography. Um, but that's money out of my own pocket. I do not charge the seller that. That's a value add that I bring. So I want an agreement in hand before that. Now, showing strategies. I mentioned this. When you talk to your uh, client about showing strategies, I tell them this. I like to list coming soon on a Monday, active on Friday. That allows me to market it. I do allow overlapping showings. Showings typically start at 9 a.m. Usually the first people in are the most serious, and usually we get offers from those people. Do not expect anything in your hands until late afternoon, late evening even, sometimes even the next day. Don't get your hopes up about getting a, uh, an offer at 9 a.m. when the first showing isn't at nine, until 9 a.m. Takes time for people. Um, but I like to overlap those showings and allow as many people in it at once because, again, human nature is co compet competitive. When they see somebody else in their house, they're going to want to offer as quick as possible. Now, I like to do open house on Saturday morning. The reason being, if I show if I show the house starting on Friday morning and those go all day, and we have the leverage of an open house at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, what that does is it inspires people to get aggressive offers in Friday or even Saturday super early morning to try to eliminate that open house from happening. In buyers' minds, they think that the house is gonna sell from the open house. So they wanna be first in and chop that opportunity off. So I use that open house time frame as leverage. I will also schedule an open house for Sunday from like 12 to two, like after the church crowd gets out. I like to say in the agent to agent documents, all offers are due by Sunday, 5 p.m. Please leave open till Monday at noon. And this is the last part, and this is the most critical part. Seller reserves the right to accept a strong offer before the deadline. When you do that, you're inspiring people to get the offer in quick, not wait till the last minute. And you will win because of that. So we've got all the time frames. We've got all the documents done. Now we need to actually go uh, get schedule the photographs and enter this into the MLS. So when I enter the, into the MLS, I'm not going to go into how to enter it, but some things that are keys. <clears throat> I've already started this. Um, things that are key here, I want to go down to make sure that you get your time frames in there right. Uh, most of this, a lot of the stuff will auto populate. One thing that I like to do is in the, uh, you get three boxes down here at the bottom that are full of verbiage. Directions, GPS it. I'm not going to show you how to get someplace. It's 2023. Agent to agent remarks. I'm not a phone caller. I prefer people to text me. So I'm going to say, please text in all caps so they get it. Josh with any questions. And then I leave my phone number. I also like to skip questions after we go into contract. So I list out who's going to do our title work. And then any additional information. So in this instance, the zero turn mower and other items are negotiable. Cool. Property description. I have a, I have a bookend thing that I do with every single listing that I have. And the reason is I want to capture people's attentions and their hearts. I want their emotions to be moved because I'm using specific words and I'm using them in all caps. So my first sentence is always, welcome home, all caps. My last sentence is always, this is home, all caps. In between there, make it sexy, make it appeal, um, shout the highlights, but let's be honest, most people don't read this stuff. But they might see the home piece. Home is different than house. Home is where your heart is, literally. House is a place. It's just a physical building. We want people to tie their emotions to this. Capiche? All right, so we've entered it in. 
I make sure that my photographs are in here. Again, if you have questions on how to enter a listing into the MLS, uh, review that video. <laughs> After I've listed this in there, I'm going to then go to showing time. The showing time app is showingtie.me. It's kind of weird. You enter in your information, you get logged in, remind me later. And then I go to my listings and I'm going to either add it or uh, it should auto populate. When I'm adding this in there, I'm just making sure that there's no showings allowed until whenever date we decided. The rules is kind of funky to play with. So if you have questions, holler at me, I'll be happy to help you but you want to make sure that your clients are in the loop on this stuff. So anytime a showing request comes through, they will get an automatic notification that someone wants to see the property. Now, backing up, I always like to tell my people that are going to list their homes, hey, the first weekend, if you can be out of town, that'd be great. If you have cats and dogs, if you make sure that they are out of the house for that first weekend, that'd be great. And the reason being, we want people to access the home and not feel like they're having to leave every minute for another showing, right? So in showing time, I told you I like to do overlapping um, showings. Let me show you what that looks like. So number one, I put down all their information and I only do text. I don't want them to receive emails and calls. I listed this as a go and show. Go and show simply means that anybody who's requesting a showing is going to automatically have it approved the same day or same minute. And it just sends us a notification that there's another showing request. If the person cannot leave their house, maybe they work from home or whatever, and they just can't leave for the weekend, then you're going to want to do appointment required, confirm. That allows the owner to confirm yes for a showing or no. Anymore, I've gotten pretty good at saying be gone and people go. So that's that. Now, over here, allow scheduling overlaps. Yes. And there's no need to, there's there's four options here. I say yes, no need to inform the showing agents. Play with this. It's not rocket science. Holler if you need help. Um, okay, now we've got the listing up. Now it's important to market it. How do we market the property? I'm going to go down a list of things. Y'all should know how to market stuff by now. We've had this conversation, but number one, I'm going to get on. So I'm going to, I'm going to create a flyer that says new listing. I can either use KW command to create that uh, flyer, or I can use something like Canva. Basically what we're looking for is a picture of the property maybe the price, maybe how many bedrooms and bath, and the location. <clears throat> Don't go above and beyond and create a whole bunch of verbiage in there because no one's going to read it. But just something that's appealing to the eye, and we can use it over and over again on all the social media platforms. So things like Instagram. I don't want just one post, guys. The day that it goes coming soon, make a video. Make a flyer post. Make a flyer story with a link to the actual listing uh, or a link to contact you if you're interested. Uh, the next day, do a post of, hey, upcoming open house. The next day, do a video tour of the property and post it. Not just Instagram, but we're also looking at Facebook, LinkedIn, maybe any other platforms that you use, Twitter or uh I don't know what else y'all hip people use. Um, but use that flyer over and over again. Additionally, look at paying for a boosted ad. In command, we should be at the point where hopefully it's fixed by now. You can actually create paid ads. Those things work. You can reach specific eyeballs in the general vicinity, and hopefully it will lead to more showing requests. Also, go into the Realtor to Realtor Coming Soon page in Facebook. It is a group. If you're not a part of it, go become a part of it and make sure you post it there. That's the social media aspect. You're posting every day leading up to it. And then you're posting about the open house coming up. And then you're posting at the open house. You're creating FOMO. You're creating 
vision on you. At the end of the day, you want all eyes on you and this listing. You don't want any seller to be able to say, I didn't see any marketing for that. So I like to make sure that my sellers are following our page. And I even tell them, make sure you share our posts. We want people to be sick of that home. But end of the day, they're going to know that you're a great realtor because you're marketing the snot out of it. Aside from social media, other things you can do to drum up interest, especially for open house, cold call, cold call the neighborhood. Say, hey, guys, I'm so sorry. I, I, my name is Josh with Keller Williams. I'm calling because there might be a lot of additional traffic this next weekend because I've got a brand new listing. It's on Friar Lane and uh, the open house is from 10 to 12. Would love to invite you if you want to come, but just want to plant the seed in case you notice an uptick in traffic. <laughs> So cold call, other things I can do. I can uh, door knock. Maybe I create that flyer and um, I create that flyer and then I go door to door in the neighborhood and leave it. Or if I'm knocking and somebody answers, I say, hey, I'm just a realtor in the area. I got a listing right down the road. We'd love to invite you to the open house. Do the things that the other 99% are not doing you'll find success. Um, last but not least, the biggest thing you can do, hold the open house. And when I say go to open house, make sure that you're signing the crap out of the neighborhood. I want balloons. I want directional signs all over the place at every major intersection. If you're not doing this stuff, you're missing out and you're not marketing to the best of your ability. Balloons probably cost 10 bucks for a huge bundle. Directional signs aren't expensive either. <coughs> Post it on the local pages. Think of anything you can do to let as many people as possible know that you've got an open house. All right. Next, we are going to start receiving offers. I like to create an offer sheet. Let me see if I can pull one up here. An offer sheet, in my eyes, is a living, breathing um, testament to how many. Here we go. <laughs> so it's an apples to apples comparison that people can jump into. So I create this in Google Sheets and then share with my sellers so that anytime we get another offer, I can just say, I shoot them a text and say, hey, got another one. Jump in there and uh, we will coordinate a time to talk about all these. That's key. We will coordinate a time to talk about all these. I like to I like to at least update them via voice once a day at least. Normally with the very first offer we get and then again at the end of the day with anything else I've heard. If it goes to day two, same thing. Start of the day, hey, here's where we stand. Let's reconnect at 5 p.m. Okay? And if anything happens between then, I will update the sheet and you'll know. I'll shoot you a text. What that does is it, it, it creates organization and it minimizes your workload. You don't want to pick up the phone call every time you get an offer. So in this scenario, I compare price, <coughs> inspection, remedy, loan type, appraisal gap, home warranty, earnest money, closing, possession, and any special notes. So you'll notice in this situation, I can compare appraisal gap real quick. Who wins? This guy. Purchase price. I can do it real quick. Who wins? This guy. No remedy. Cool. Conventional. That's the best loan type. Relatively quick close. Cool. Okay, so maybe this person wins. End of the day, you're creating ease and efficiency. Last but not least, okay, I received one offer. Let's say I received one offer. Would I be doing my best job if I just said, okay, well, we, we got an offer. Let's accept it. Absolutely not. What I should do and what I do do is as soon as we get the first offer, I communicate with, with my sellers and then I tell them this. Here are my next steps. <coughs> my next steps are to go to anybody who's shown the property today or, or over the past few days and tell them that we got an offer and ask them if they might have an offer coming. What that does is two things. Number one, it inspires offers. If somebody was planning on waiting till the offer deadline. 
and it <clears throat> sorry it lets you know right away if somebody's going to be writing an offer so that you can just jump to the next one meaning you're not waiting around for somebody to submit an offer who's just not going to do it it's also good communication from you to the other agents and you're building bridges you're not burning them down because if i just accepted the first offer then somebody else might get pissed that they didn't get a chance to submit one as well a lot of people don't read that agent to agent verbiage and they think they just see the deadline the offer deadline and think oh we've got till sunday at 5 p.m. i'll wait till then in this scenario in this scenario uh this uh, not this listing but another listing um we actually had that happen where we received an offer i let all the other agents know that we received an offer that was strong and we were considering it and then one of them said well we were going to wait till the deadline but if you've got one already in hand then we'll get it in and out and it turned out to be the winning offer they thanked me for letting them know and we were in contract a full day and a half early so I didn't have to work the whole weekend. Negotiation is a must. This is where I separate myself from the rest of the agents. And now you can too. It is imperative to be an open book with as many as much of this information as possible. So if somebody, let's say we got six offers. And a seventh person calls me and says, hey, I'm thinking about writing an offer. What can you tell me? I, I'll literally tell them. I'll say, well, we're in the 270s. Can you compete? Because I don't want them wasting an offer, bringing me an offer that I wait around for that's like 240. That's not going to be in play. It's wasting my time and theirs. And I will look much better in their eyes if I help them save time. Also, I'm basically creating an open book. I'm saying, if you want to win, you have to come hard. And I literally tell people that. <sighs> End of the day, guys, uh, this is all about communication, especially with your clients. Let them know what you're doing behind the scenes. You want to look like an all-star. You want to look like an all-star. You want that five-star uh, uh, review. So in order to do that, you've got to let them know every step of the way, even if it's just via text, which is normally my jam. I normally say, hey, we've got six offers. Take a look in the offer sheet. Here's what I'm doing. Here's when I think we should communicate via phone. And let's go ahead and have a decision made by X time. And let's make sure we do it early enough that in case we encounter any technical glitches, we have time to, to figure them out. And then once we go into contract, call them up, say, hey, guys, so, so glad. I know this was a little stressful, a little whirlwind, but you did it. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Tomorrow, we're going to send you a checklist of things that we're going to do, a timeline, and we'll be off to the races towards closing. <clears throat> hopefully this was beneficial for y'all this is how we do it steal shamelessly use it in your own business and go get that go get those high price point listings and sell them for more than you ever thought your clients will love you and you'll work more efficiently love y'all have a great day